the senior pastor here, and I have the uh, the honor of being uh, being David and Marina's pastor, as well as Sawyer and Vasilia, uh, and we're honored to be able to uh, officiate and to host uh, this memorial service as we as we gather to to remember Alexander, uh, to give thanks to the Lord for for his life, uh, but. Most importantly, we're here to celebrate the hope that we all have in the resurrection of the dead through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so as much as it's a remembrance, it's a celebration. It's a celebration that our our Savior has come uh, and that he has conquered sin and death that we might be with him forever. If you have a, a, does anyone need a bulletin? Did everyone get one as they came in? If you need one, just put your hand up in the air and Uh, Jen will make sure that you have one, but may I invite you to stand as we begin this memorial service together. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. For I know, it says in Job, that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans, For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. In the book of Revelation, it says, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, O God who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that your servant Alexander, being raised with Christ, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, we ask that you would deal graciously with all of Alexander's family and all friends who mourn on this day. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Just so it doesn't sound a little bit awkward, I'll speak a little slower so that you have a little more time to to, to translate. Uh, um, And so that that your your mother can, can join with us in this time of, Celebration and Memorial. Our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, the prophet, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away From all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day Behold, this is our God. 
We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I, you know, if, if anyone is comfortable, uh, just leave a, a time and space here for if anyone would like to say a few words in uh, remembrance uh, of Alexander. Um, and if, if anyone feels comfortable, come up to the podium and so everybody can hear you. Um, but uh, it, and if it's not a time that you're comfortable with, it, it's okay. We'll just uh, have a moment of silence before continuing on with hearing our, our gospel reading. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you, everyone, uh, for being here. Thank you, David, and thank you to the church for doing all of this and, and uh, setting this up and uh, supporting our family so many ways. Thank you to my family. Thank you to our friends, our co-workers for being here as well, and everyone f from the church. Um, it's um, it's uh, so nice to see that uh, you've come and supported us, um, and we'll always be grateful for that. Um, I just want to um, say a little, a little bit about, um, you know, my memories of uh, my father-in-law and um, yeah, so I, I um, first heard about him when I was first talking to Marina, and I remember the first thing she said about her, her dad was that he had beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> so he, she really uh, built him up, you know, and, uh, uh, um, you know, talked about how strong he was, and um, it was very clear from the early beginning that he was, he had always been wrapped around her finger. And um, so I, I was um, uh, excited and nervous when I went over uh, to meet her parents. I was really wanting to impress them, uh, ask, ask them uh, for uh, Marina's hand in marriage. And so I wanted to make a good impression. And as soon as we get off the bus, uh, it was in the middle of winter, so I see this, uh, this big Russian guy with his big uh, pea coat and the furry Russian hat. So everything uh, I had pictured <laughs> that he would be. So <laughs> from there we walked. Uh, for me, it was a long way uh, <laughs> to, to their apartment. And we get in. And he was so excited to uh, spend time with me. He kept saying that he wanted to take me hunting as soon as I got there that day. And <laughs> Hunt, hunting in Ukraine is a little different. Um, we would be walking most of the way through the snow carrying heavy wooden shotguns. And uh, from there, we would be walking most of the time, you know, while we're hunting, looking for rabbits. Uh, and Marina said, absolutely no. Um, <laughs> the other thing he wanted to do, he was really excited, was to uh, uh, play chess with me. And so I agreed. And um, I remember sitting there, um, and he was studying the board, looking at my moves. He was really quiet. And um, Marina asked, is he any good? And I could see the disappointment <laughs> on his face <laughs> when he was like, no, just like that silent <laughs> head shake, no. And then I had gotten a, a little bit under the weather, and he, he wanted to uh, help me out and uh, uh, use some of his uh, methods of uh, healing. And he brought a, a whole clove of garlic to me, and he told me that uh, uh, I'll feel a lot better after I chew this whole clove of garlic. You know? <laughs> so I was, I was feeling cold symptoms and uh, a headache, and then I ate the clove of garlic. and. Uh, uh, from there, I started to feel nauseous as well. <laughs> so I, I think, yeah, so it only added the symptoms to me. But, <laughs> but, but while I was there, um, her sister would come over and bring her kids. At the time, uh, she has two kids, uh, Alex and Sophia. And uh, Sophia was around Vasilia's age um, at the time. And I was able to watch him and how he interacted with them. And I could see that it was Sophia now that was wrapped around his finger. 
and uh, he loved Alex, and he, Alex was a little bit older, and you could tell he wanted Alex to be tough, you know, a tough, you know, boy, but arm wrestle with him and, and everything, and, uh, you know, at the time, I could never imagine that, um, you know, he would, he would be um, that, way, that way with my kids. You know. And I could have never imagined that we would be spending as much time as we have for the last um, six years together. Um, altogether, we added it up from the time Sawyer was born till now. He, he lived with us for three and a half years. And so um, every day, you know, we, we would, uh, you know, spend together and, uh, you know, live our lives together. And when he came, <clears throat> the first time Sawyer was born, he was so excited. He spent every minute of every day with Sawyer and uh, Sawyer was now wrapped around his, fi or he was now wrapped around Sawyer's finger and he would go on walks with them several times a day for hours of the day. And he, uh, both of our kids were late walkers, so he was really dedicated to making sure that Sawyer was able to walk. He'd hold his hand uh, and walk with him all the time, Sawyer. He, he, he taught you how to walk. And um, he, um, he was just so uh, joyful and dedicated and content and optimistic. Um, when I think of everything Ecclesiastes is, is trying to teach us about daily life, uh, taking pleasure in the simple things of life. Life, life is really hard to grasp, and uh, that's something that I've um, uh, probably I, I, I uh, brood, you know, too much over the meaning of life, and and uh, you know, um, but my father-in-law, he he um, understood uh, life better than me in that way where. He he, um, he would just enjoy his family, and do anything for his family. If there was ever a need, he was right there, and he would, he would, um, he would, do what he needs to do, and he would do it with uh, joy and optimism. And um, you know, he he loved helping people. He loved helping his family. He loved helping the neighbors. He was always friends with everyone in the neighborhood, even though he couldn't speak English. He. He, he knew, he just knew everyone was his friend. And as soon as you'd meet him for the first time, you're best friends with him in his mind. And um, I, I remember when Marina was pregnant the second time, how much he wanted a, a boy. <laughs> and uh, he was the only one, uh, but he, he wanted a boy. And <laughs> he found out that, uh, you know, Vasily was going to be a girl. And um, as uh, Providence would have it, he um, was brought back. Um, you know, uh, to us uh, the past couple of years, and he was able to get to know Vasilia and get wrapped around her finger, and um, all of those um, you know, desires to have another boy, all that flew out the window um, when he met Vasilia, and just as you would expect, he would walk with her every day. Uh, I'm so grateful now that uh, we have a ring camera and we have all these videos of them in the front yard playing and I can always hear uh, Vasilia laughing at uh, everything Dita was doing and um, I'm so grateful for that. So, so um, yeah, uh, remembering, remembering my father-in-law is that he was dedicated, he was strong, he was, he was really strong and uh, loved everyone helped everyone, and um, as much as this uh, was a shock, and as much as this was, um, you know, difficult and painful, and how real the stink of death is right now, um, nevertheless, we're, we look for the resurrection and, and the life of the world to come. hard. <laughs> um, I 
because my dad taught me how to be. Um, he was just being an example how to push yourself through a lot by just even like going on a walk and <laughs> he didn't complain. He never complained about anything. He didn't want to be a burden for us. I know that. And um, he just pushed through everything for sickness, any kind of pains. He just always be strong. <laughs> and I think this is how I learned by watching him because I'm the same way no matter what like I can do it I will push myself no matter how hard it is whatever obstacle comes away my way but um I do rely on God too right I, I do I do <laughs> but it's just like an example for me always that he's you can do it and he always taught me to be honest and direct so guys if I tell whatever I think this is from my dad <laughs> Yes, like, Marina, it's better to be honest and uh, direct. Like, if you have any problems with anyone, just go and solve it first directly with this person. Don't just go anywhere. So my methods may be not very um, suitable to America, but I'm learning my way. <laughs> <laughs> and I know he loved us so much. Um, he loved my mom so much. I think this is the hardest for her right now. And... I know I just will miss him so much. I know I will not be able to say a happy Father's Day this year, but but I can pray to God, and uh, I'm still thankful that I had uh, a chance to spend so much time with him last four years. He had uh, all together we spent four years, and I'm like, oh wow, that's that's a lot. <laughs> I wouldn't think about this, but. I'm so grateful that God gave, gave him such a easy, he took him easy way. He didn't suffer. He didn't, his last means, I hope, I don't know, but I hope um, it wasn't that painful. I wish I could be with him, but I pray that God all comfort us, especially my mom, because she's really. She, she needs a lot of support right now. I don't know. I cannot say like, too many memories. I have so many memories that I, we can keep here like till the, <laughs> the end of uh, the day. So I think this is what I wanted to say. He was just very strong and being an example for me, being like my hero, how to leave and how to push forward. Thank you. Thank you both so much for for sharing. It's uh, it's beautiful to get hear hear more about him. The times that that I got to meet Alexander, obviously the language barrier kept us from uh, from from getting to know each other too much. But uh, but he there was always a smile on his face, and he was uh, always there to interested in being engaged and uh, and and with everyone who was around him. So we're. Honored to remember him and give thanks to the Lord for him. Would you please stand now as we hear the the hope that we have uh, in the gospel of John chapter 14 verses 1 through 6. This is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, "Let let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. That where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Well, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. 
How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you. You may be seated. You know, as I thought about this passage, especially for, for Alexander and for Valentina and, uh, and their time, I apologize for the noises outside. We, uh, as you can see, we're under construction and uh, weren't able to stop what they were doing. Um, but uh, this passage seemed in many ways so uh, appropriate uh, as uh, Alexander and Valentina have had to be away from home. But they've come and made a, a new home here uh, with, with their family uh, over these past years. It wasn't, uh, obviously they wanted to be here to be with, uh, the, be with the grandkids, but it was also uh, the time that they were here was also not necessarily by their own choosing. War in, uh, in Ukraine forced them to, to have to, to stay here and to be away from their home. Uh, but here, Jesus tells us something incredibly hopeful uh, and incredibly beautiful uh, about all of us. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. You know, another Another translation for, for rooms is house or home. What, what a beautiful picture for all of us. That what we're promised here by Jesus is that he says, In my Father's house are many homes. There are many homes, play, meaning the place where you belong, the place where you were meant to be. And he said, In my Father's house are many homes. Homes, and if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? So not only does Jesus tell us that there is a home that's awaiting us when we put our hope and faith and trust in Jesus, but not only that, there's a place there in that home for us. You know, another translation uh, of that word place, you know, it seems like a very generic kind of word, right? It can, it's even can be more specifically translated as a seat which is a much more beautiful picture to me because not only is Jesus telling us that his father has a home, a dwelling place, that, that it's being prepared for us, that there's a seat there for us. Does anyone have their favorite uh, seat at home? <laughs> Maybe the, the lazy boy. I don't know if Alexander, did he have a favorite seat that he liked to sit in uh, at y'all's house? A place that, uh, that he felt especially comfortable to be able to enjoy and uh, and you, you know when you're sitting there that you just feel comfort and you feel like uh, all is, all is going to be well and peaceful for just at least a few moments, right? Uh, until the kids come in and want something. Um, but, but what Jesus is telling us is not only is there a place, a home that, that, that God has prepared for us to be with him forever, but there is the seat. The lazy boy is there and he's prepared it for us, that place where we can go and be at rest and be at peace with him the way we were always meant to be. And then Jesus gives the assurance of how we can get there. He said, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. You know, the beautiful picture here is that you know, even all of us, I know that for Alexander and Valentina, they especially had to be away from home, not by their own choice. But the truth is, as much as we think that we're at home here, we're not. Every single one of us are sojourners. There's a, a, one of the way scripture talks about it also, we're resident aliens here because our true home is meant to be with the Lord. He created us to be in intimate relationship with him. And, no, and, and until that day where we will be reunited with him in our heavenly home or in the, or in the new creation uh, and our home with him, the dwelling place and that place of peace and that seat of peace with him, none of us are at home. But we have that promise that 
he will come and take us to be with him when we put our trust and faith in him. And so today we, we, we can rejoice. We can, we can rejoice and give thanks that, that Alexander is at home. And he, he's more at home now than he has ever been before. And that one day, too, we will join him. And we will enjoy our home and our place with our Heavenly Father forever. Thanks be to God. Will you please stand now as we affirm our faith together in this ancient creed from the very first Christians who proclaimed this creed is a hope of our faith and what we believe and what we hold on to. Let us say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. It's our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. I invite you to be seated as we offer our prayers to the Lord for Alexander, for the family and for all of us, let us pray, saying, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant, we pray, to your whole church in heaven and on earth, your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all of our days. Lord, in your mercy, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all of our sins and serve you in faithful obedience. Lord, in your mercy, grant to all who mourn this day. And Lord, we especially lift up Valentina to you. We lift up Marina and Natasha to David and Sawyer and Vasilia. And then we lift up Natasha's family to you. That they may have a sure confidence in your fatherly care. That casting their grief on you, they may know the consolation of your love for them. Lord, in your mercy, help us, we pray in the midst of things that we cannot understand, to believe and trust 
and the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Grant us the grace to entrust Alexander to your never-failing love. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor which you show to all of your people. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that increasing in knowledge and love of you He may go from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, grant us, with all of those who have died in the hope of the resurrection, the fullness of life in your eternal and everlasting glory. And with all of your saints, to receive the crown of life promised to all who share in the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to please stand. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Alexander with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth we shall return. For so so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust. And to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant, Alexander, with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Alexander. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, By the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And now let us go forth in the name of Christ and in the hope of the resurrection. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you all for being here. And uh, you're welcome to, to stay and to, to talk and uh, greet the, the family and as long as you would like. Bless you all.